Hello, St. Paul's. We are looking at the good news about Jesus today, and we find in this passage in Mark 8, 31 to 33, that the news is good, but it is costly. God's grace is given freely, but it cost God tremendously. If you recall, our last passage was when Jesus was asking, who do people say that I am and who do you say I am? Peter said, you are the Messiah, you are the Christ, you are the anointed one, and he was right. The things that they were thinking that may be true about Jesus were true. Life was going somewhere. They had sacrificed a lot to be with Jesus. And now, or at least in the near future, things were going to turn out well. Jesus would be in charge, and they would be his inner cabinet. Then Jesus called them together and told them that the Son of Man would be rejected, that he would suffer tremendously, and that he would be killed, and that he would rise again on the third day. Jesus was basically saying that for him as Messiah, there would be no crown, no throne, no adoring crowd. There would be rejection and suffering and death. This was so far out of the disciples' frame of reference that they couldn't even fathom it. They had trouble taking in what Jesus was saying. And Peter was the first to recover, and perhaps because he was the one who had made the, the confession of faith just earlier. But Peter took Jesus aside, and we read in Mark's gospel that Peter began to rebuke Jesus. Now, just imagine that for a moment. Peter is rebuking the Son of God for something that he had said. And Jesus' reaction was over the top. Get behind me, Satan. I can just imagine how crushed Peter was in Jesus saying those words. Get behind me, Satan. Get out of my face. Get out of my way. You see, Peter was presenting Jesus with his biggest temptation. The temptation to find an easy way and not to go to the cross. But Jesus knew that the cross was the way that he had to go. It was the hard way and the way that he had to follow. So to suggest anything else was a temptation that had to be rejected. This passage is a hard passage. Think about this from the disciples' perspective. They've just realized that Jesus is the Messiah of God sent to save his people. And in almost the next breath, he is saying that he is going to be rejected and suffer and he will die. It was shocking to them. This passage proclaims the necessity of the cross, that that is the way, that that was God's plan, that to forgive our sins was the necessity of the cross, where God's love and his holiness came together perfectly in Jesus on the cross. But it also proclaims to us that the way of Jesus is not often an easy way. The way for Jesus was the way of the cross, but the way for us as followers of Jesus, though we would like to find easy ways and expedient ways, the ways before us are usually more difficult. That our lives should stand out as different in a society that doesn't like difference. That we should proclaim the very love of God in a world that has a very different understanding of love that we should understand responsibility as being at least as important as rights. And that to proclaim Jesus in the Western world these days, in Canada, is to be rejected, to be shunned, to be marginalized and set aside. The road of following Jesus is not an easy road. And this passage reminds us that the hard road is the right road. The cross was necessary. And we give thanks to God. I give thanks to the Lord for Jesus' willingness to go to the cross for me, for you, for us. But this passage also reminds us that the road for those who follow Jesus is not an easy road. Let us be willing to follow where Jesus leads on whatever road that is. Let us set aside our desire for comfort and ease and follow Jesus. Let's pray. 
Our God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his willingness to go to the cross for us. We thank you for your word to us. We thank you that Jesus was tempted even as we are tempted, and yet he overcame. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to trust you in trusting Jesus. Help us to follow Jesus on any and every road that he leads us. Our God, all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you.